many are giving up and closing for good. Michael Tracy is the man who wrote that piece and took those pictures. He's a freelance journalist. He joins us now. Michael, thanks so much uh, for coming on. I'm struck by two things. One, how good this piece is and how arresting the images are. And two, that you, who don't work for a big news, news organization, did this story when almost nobody else did. You just drove from little city to little city and asked the people who live there, how are things going? Why isn't the Washington Post and the New York Times, why aren't they doing this? Well, that's true, Tucker. I mean, it wasn't rocket science. We were told that this was the biggest protest movement ever in U.S. history, or at least the New York Times very excitedly reported that. And in tandem with that protest movement were historic nationwide riots on the order of something we've never seen since at least the 60s and perhaps even going back further. So as somebody with a journalistic instinct, I wanted to see for myself how communities were dealing with the aftermath, what the attitudes toward what transpired were. And I just wasn't really getting that from the sort of mainstream organs that you would expect to be covering a story of such purported significance. And you're right, I mean, just traveling around, I can't tell you how many boarded up establishments I've seen. It's impossible to t keep a tally. And this is across the entire country. I've driven across the continental United States. And if you go to the New York Times, or you go to the Washington Post, or you go to any of these other outlets, it's not as though there's an easily accessible tally anywhere where you could, you know, find out what the precise quantification is of the amount of destruction that's been wrought in these purportedly historic events. And you really have to ask yourself, why is that? Why has journalistic resources not been de de deployed to illuminate yes. the scope of what occurred. It's a pretty simple question to pose, and yet the answer seems to be elusive. So let me get your subjective view of it all. Having done it, driven coast to coast through towns big and small, you've lived in this country all your life. What's it like? How extensive is the damage? The damage is beyond anything that I've witnessed and in, in my lifespan, which isn't that long, thankfully. Uh, but also beyond anything I understand to have happened in the United States, again, since at least the 1960s and perhaps earlier. I mean, I think there are components or features of these particular riots that differ from the 1960s, where these are very much multiracial in nature in terms of the perpetrators. So you have certain right. cities in which the protesters or the rioters are more white than the police forces which have been dispatched to control or monitor them, which is sort of interesting sociologically, wouldn't you say? And you know, again, when you go to you know, even some relatively sparse locales, like you mentioned in the intro, Green Bay, Wisconsin, Olympia, Washington, and then in combination obviously with Chicago and Seattle and Philadelphia, again, the enormity of this just has not been anywhere near close to, uh, to conveyed by the information sources which the public relies upon for accurate depictions of what's going on in the country around them. And that to me is disturbing as a citizen in addition to a journalist. Another thing that I talk, I noticed when speaking to the residents of a lot of these places, many of whom are minority, many of whom are recent immigrants, as you noted, whose livelihoods have been completely upended, is that their sentiments differ markedly from the activists and journalists who profess to be speaking on their behalf. These journal, these uh, residents, again, largely non-white, tend to be uh, far more scornful, far more condemnatory of what has racked their communities than the pundits and the activists who gallivant around and claim to be their representatives in the popular discourse. There could not be a, a wider gulf there, and that also has not been anywhere near close to adequately conveyed. Yes, yeah, so that's journalism. When a reporter actually gets out on the road with a car and a notebook and asks people questions, you find surprising things. So I'm... Michael Tracy, thank you so much. I hope our viewers will read your piece. It's worth it. Appreciate it. All right, thanks, Tucker. Well, students ought to be heading back to school at the end of this month or the beginning of next. 